name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. We're going to mean the Jesus and Easter, everyone. Christus and Isti, and Messiah will come, how can come. Christ is risen, truly is risen. Kul Santo Tayyibin, as I mentioned earlier, we have not even, uh, yeah, I mean, last week was a little bit after Easter. All of us were relaxed a little bit, but also, uh, yeah, and it was a tough week because we had so many funerals in our church last week. And we pray for those who really went to heaven. And also pray for their families that the Lord God give the power, strength, and support. Uh, Dr. Magdi, uh, Uncle Munir, Uncle Galel, and uh, uh, also, Yani, it was very rough week, Yani, but we pray for them. Meher Lutfalla also, uh, we pray for them. God may repose their soul in heaven. Uh, tonight, actually, I was gonna, from now on, except tonight. I will start the Bible study series next Friday, Sunday. And if you receive the schedule from the church, now we made the schedule a little bit easy. It's going to be Saturday Arabic with a Bonomoros. Sunday. One night Arabic, tonight will be an English night. So Wednesday will be an Arabic night. Tomorrow will be Abunopoulos. Also, we'll have, uh, Abunopoulos will have the Arabic night tomorrow. That means Thursday will be the English night for Abunopoulos. And Tuesday would be Abu Namina uh, in, in English, then Friday would be the Arabic, and then we'll be covering the week. So we'll have a nightly gathering. I hope all of you really try to log on. And uh, I hope tonight, we, since it's an English night, that you know, if you, you can gather together and we'll, uh, we'll talk. I decided actually to, to talk about the resurrection, especially the resurrection of our Lord and Service Christ. We do not talk about much. Yeah, and I wanted to study the Bible. I started to study the Bible, Bible study, the book of John, but they said, let me continue tonight to talk about the, uh, the resurrection of all of the of Christ. And exactly tonight, I'm going to talk about really uh, uh, what difference does the resurrection make in my life? What difference does the resurrection make in my life? How important is the resurrection? How important is Christianity? So what difference? Does the resurrection make in my life? Just before I start uh, talking about that, I want to go over a little bit by, uh, with uh, one of the most beautiful chapters in the Bible, First Corinthians chapter 15. It's if you want to know about the resurrection, read the chapter. In matter of fact, each funeral, either male or female, or man and woman, or young, uh, uh, we always read the epistle and be read from the book from. Uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 15. Because first Corinthians chapter 15, 15, Saint John actually speaks to us about the resurrection of the Lord, the appearance of the Lord, how many, and also the meaning of the resurrection in my life. And he gave a beautiful, strong analogy. He said, By the way, if Christ is not risen, that means that there is no resurrection for me. So it's a very important chapter today. I'm just going to go over a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm going to go over first Corinthians chapter 1, first. Uh, 1 to 5, and then verse 12 to 15. Then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the resurrection before I get to the topic, which tonight I'm going to speak to what difference does the resurrection make in my life. Uh, if you open the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 1 to 5, we'll start. And as I mentioned, this is one of the most important book about the resurrection of Paul Luke, as it's Christ. Uh, and then the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, one the means, and St. Paul wrote, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which you also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sin according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture, and that he was seen by Cyphus, then by the twelve. Then the rest start listing actually. Uh, uh, many, some of the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ to the disciple and to the people. I want to go just 
quickly uh, like go over this one here. Number one, Saint John actually Saint Paul is declared to us more over brother. I declare to you, he's coming to declare to us what exactly he's trying to declare to us. He said, "I declare to you the gospel." The word of the gospel means good news. So I'm coming right now, Saint Paul is saying to the Christians and to each one of us, I'm coming to declare to you the gospel, the good news, which I which I preach. So he's declaring the gospel that is preaching of this gospel here. He said, by which we stand. He said, you are saying, so the gospel. Them part of the gospel, I throw it with his face. And you, if you I'm still on, or I'm disconnected. No, you were disconnected, but now you're on, Yabuna. Okay, so verse three, actually, I'm in verse three right now. We say, For I delivered to you first all that which I also received. This is a very important verse, by the way, because he's telling us about he's delivering to us something he received and to show us the power of the tradition, the power of the whole tradition. There's a lot of things in our church, but not really, it's not fitting exactly in the Bible. But we received it from the early fathers. And that's what he said, actually, he said Paul here affirming something very important about the importance of the whole tradition. He said, For I delivered to you first of all that which I received. And he started actually listening to us. What exactly? He said, That Christ died for our sin. That Christ died for our sins. So the first one, Christ died for our sin. That's what we celebrate last week, the Holy Basphemy. According to what? According to the scripture. So everything is written from the Old Testament, from the prophets. So I'm delivering you something that I received, and it's basically coming from the old from the scripture, which is from the prophet. And that he was buried, and then he talks about so now he, he died for us, he buried, and the most important part of, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scripture. And so Christ rose again from the dead. That, and he talked about, you know what? He affirming the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in verse 5 said, then he was seen. When he say he was seen, means he confirming something very important. Christ rose from the dead, and all of us witnessed that. And he said, he said, he was seen by Simon, verse 7, 6 said, after that he was seen by, by over 500 brethren at once, and then uh, of whom I greater part remain. To the finish, some of them are still living. Then in the end, they're saying he was seen by James. And even he said, you know, I saw him personally. So St. Paul actually revealed to us what exactly happened. And then from verse 12, actually talks about very important He said, said, now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, he's questioning us. How do some among you say that there's no resurrection of the dead. But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and our faith also empty. Yes, and you are found false witness of God because we have testified of God that is he raised up Christ from the dead. He did not raise up. If in fact, the dead did not rise, for if the dead 
dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. What actually the main point of this action from verse 12 until verse 16 here, even to complete the, the whole, uh, it's talking about really the importance of Christ's resurrection and my resurrection. If Christ is not risen, that means I myself, I will have no resurrection. But the foundation of our faith, actually, it's basically based on one thing, the resurrection of Paul, Lord of Christ. That's how important the resurrection is. The importance of the resurrection is basically that the new beginning, the, the moment, all the disciples after Christ died on the cross, they were all disappearing, dying, crying. That's it. We lived a good life with this man here, whatever time. But after the resurrection was basically, it's the new beginning. It's, an, it's the new start. That's why the 40 days ministry of our Lord God, Sarah Christ, from the resurrection to the ascension, it's a very essential to the church. Very essential to the church in this 40 days here. And then he said to them, if Christ is not risen, then our faith is empty and our preaching is empty, which means, you know what? Why should we preach? And in the end, in the middle action of the same chapter, he said, let's go eat and drink and have fun because tomorrow we shall die. There's no more of us. But I like to actually hear, especially specifically, verse, he said, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and our faith is empty. St. Paul, Paul here emphasizing the power and the importance of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. His resurrection is my resurrection. And therefore, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ give me hope that there's also a resurrection. That's why last week we say goodbye to our loved one. We're saying goodbye to all of them, but we have one thing, one hope, that one day we are going to meet. As we always say in the end of the creed, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the common age to come. This is the foundation of our faith. This is the foundation of our faith that Christ's resurrection gave us power and gave us hope that there's actually a resurrection for all of us. That's one of the fathers said something really good. He said, for the believers, not for anyone, for the believer, after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Christ, there is hope beyond the grief. Yeah, and when we go bury our loved one, we bury them and we are crying and weeping, but actually we have hope beyond. Because one thing, Christ's resurrection is for the believer, the, after, the, uh, after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Christ, there is hope beyond the grave. Because our Lord has opened the door to the paradise for us by his death and by his resurrection. So by his death and his resurrection, he opened the door. And that's why we believe actually, uh, after Christ died on the cross, he went to Hades and he, he got actually all the righteous people from the Old Testament and they went to paradise. And that's why he told the thief on the cross, when you want to give him something good, and the thief basically was telling him, remember me, O Lord, when I come to your kingdom. The thief could face Christ on a weak moment, he saw him crucified. Christ want to give him some skit. Today you will be with me in paradise. The reason is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Christ is the power. I didn't ask you a question. What happened if there's no resurrection? Number one, there's no, there's no faith. Our faith will be empty. Our preach will be empty. Also, number two, actually, those who witness the resurrection and we say it will be basically liars. And this is what we find it in Acts chapter 4, verse 3. Not only that, we're still in sin. If there's no direction for all of you, we're still in sin. And though all of the old those who died in the Old Testament, until now even, they're still living in, in sin, we're still in sin. That means all the prophecies of the Old Testament, it's vain. And the most important point, actually, St. Paul mentioned it here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 18 and 19, he said, actually, you know what? He said, then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are all of men the most pitiable. It means we are the most pitiable people. You know what? That's it. If Christ is not risen and there's no direction for me, that means حتى يقول لك كده أشقى جميع الناس يعني أنا كده بقى إيه كده بيتابل مش خلاص very painful very painful 
but that's what's sensible action. So the question comes, which I raised first, what difference the reduction of all and civil supplies make in my life? What really the reduction make in my life? In order for me to answer this question, actually, I wanted to know what difference the reduction made in the disciples' life. What difference the reduction made in the disciples' life? So in order for, for us to understand, I'm going to actually talk to you about four points, actually. Number one, actually, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on the disciple was a cheering the fearful. Or I want to remove, I want to say in other words, removing any fear from them. With so many Magdalene, early morning, went to the tomb, seeking and looking for Christ. And as soon as I'm trying to get the reference here. It's seeking and licking Christ. And the Lord God saw her as, woman, why are you weeping? Why are you seeking? And she told him, you know what? They took my master. They took my master. And the Lord God actually told her, you know what? Who are you seeking for? Do not weep, Mary. And he revealed himself to her. Not only that, he told him, Mary, go tell the disciple about what he saw. Christ is risen. And this is, you will find it actually in the first, with this, consider the first appearance. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 5, verse 5 and 6, say, But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you see Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. Alas, the tomb is empty. He is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. So the number one actually removed any fear from the disciple and the Mary, Mary Magdalene said, Mary, all the Mary, removed any fear from them. He said to them, do not be afraid. And I feel this is a very important message for us, especially all of us right now. Yeah, and the disciple, they were all in the rooms hiding. I want to say maybe they are a quarantine. Everybody in quarantine puts up, sitting in their own room, cannot do yani, cannot go out. Like us right now. We cannot go out. But you know what? During this time, the Lord came to them. He penetrated any doors and walked in. And the first message said to them, you know what? Do not be afraid. And this is a message for us. I know coronavirus is very strong. Coronavirus is taking a lot of our loved ones. Coronavirus creating so much fear in all of us. Coronavirus actually is starting, basically allowing us, basically, we do not know what will happen tomorrow. Yeah, and today somebody was asking me, when do you think the church will open? When do, you, when do you think life will go back to normal? I said, I do not know. But the one thing Christ is telling us, do not be afraid. This is a main message during the 50 days. During the 40 days when the Lord God, when the, our Lord God appeared to the disciple and to the maid and to many. Just only the Bible mentioned did appearance. But it could be too many. It could be too many. But the message when he walks in, look at the door and say, Do not be afraid. And I hope the message tonight, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid from tomorrow. Do not be afraid from the quarantine that you're in right now. Do not be afraid from the unknown. If you have a financial problem, do not be afraid. If you have a health problem, do not be afraid. If you have any struggle in your life right now, do not be afraid. The message our Lord God Jesus Christ, as soon as he came out of the tomb, he gave the disciple, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, he said, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, or the spirit of failure. God did not give us the spirit of fear or the spirit of failure, but the power, the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. That's what God gives. Do not be afraid. It's the first message of the resurrected Christ telling all of us really what difference the resurrection makes in my life is telling us to take away, remove any fear from us. Number two, actually. It gives the disciple power. The disciple acts after the after during the holy after the resurrection of our Lord. They were running in fear. 
They were hiding. I'm sure they all of them in the rooms locking the doors. They were afraid and they had no power. Look what happened to St. Peter, the one who denied Christ three times. The one, actually, the, the young girl asked him, You are one of his followers. You are one of his followers. So I do not know this man here. Look at what St. Peter after the resurrection of Paul Luke at St. Christ. Look, the power of the resurrection made it evil slide. St. Peter actually was able to go witness Christ in the world. Not the power of the resurrection in Peter only, but all the martyrs. All the martyrs that they die in the name of our Christ. When you look at St. George, what gives you power, St. George, in the resurrection? When you look at a young day, a young boy, St. Abeno, what gives you resurrection? Will give, tell you the, what gives you power? Will give you, tell you the resurrection. When you go to St. Marina, St. Marina, how you were dying for Christ? No, I'm not worried. Because with Christ's resurrection, I have hope that he give me a resurrection from my body one day, and I hope that there's another resurrection and there's another life that's in my life. So actually, he gives them power. You compare the disciple before the resurrection and after the resurrection, especially after they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They were like lions. Lions, as Jesus said, I would send the lions among wolves. They were lions. They were not afraid from anything. If somebody said, I kill you, fine. Look at our beloved saint that we're going to say to Mark the Apostle. He was not afraid from anything. They tortured him. He said, fine. That's no problem for me. What give you power, said Mark? He said, no, the resurrection gives him power. So number one, the line, they get, move away from fear. Number two, give him power. I love St. Paul and St. Peter, actually, when I talk about St. Peter, the weak Peter, the one who wept, cried, wept bitterly after he denied Christ three times, the one he felt he's weak, the, the one he felt he's lost. Look at him after he received the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you look at uh, 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 him during that, when he gave the sermons in the book of Acts chapter 15, he said, he spoke with a loud voice, telling everybody about the wrath of Christ. And he started actually bringing in a list you have to believe that Christ has to die and rose. And he told them what happened. This is according to the scripture. This is according to the prophet. This is according to the Old Testament. So I'll give you power, St. Peter will tell you one thing. What difference to the resurrection of our Lord made in life is one thing. It gives me power. It gives me power. I love the beautiful verse St. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I hope all of us when they say, I know him and I know the power of his resurrection. So, number one, remove away any fear from us. Number two, give uh, given us power. Number three, actually, give the disciple uh, restoring the doubtful. After the resurrection of Paul, after the dying of Paul, you guys on the post, so many people doubting. If this is a young fellow that we saw him raising ladders of the dead. If this is the same man that really did so many miracles. If this is a man that fit 5,000 people. Where were these people actually there in this first picture? They were not there. And they all run away from him. Not only that, they all start doubting Christ. So the doubt, not only Thomas. I think God allowed Thomas to doubt so he can restore all those who doubt. The resurrection of all the Jesus Christ. So the doubt of Thomas today actually celebrating the church. Thomas, it's one of the minor feasts. Thomas uh, Sunday, which when Thomas doubt Christ after he appeared to the ten, then he told the that I, uh, they told him so Christ. Said, no, no, no. I have to see him and I have to touch him. I have to see by my eyes. Then a week later, which is the first Sunday after Easter, which is this today. He appeared to Thomas and told him, Thomas, come, reach out my hand, reach out my side and touch me, and touch me. So he came actually to restore those who doubt Christ. If you are in doubt of your God, if you are in doubt of the power of your God, do not be afraid he can restore your doubt. And by the way, I want to clarify one thing. Thomas was not, there's a difference between doubt and unbelief. There's a major difference between doubt and unbelief. Doubt, lack of evidence. If somebody is doubtful, once you show the evidence, they can change.
their mind. I'm going to repeat this again. Doubt, basically, when somebody doubts, is a lack of evidence. I'm not doubting. I doubt all oh, the appearance of St. Mary. Because I lack evidence. I'm not denying. I, it's not unbelief. I lack evidence. For doubt, lack of evidence. But if somebody is doubtful, once he show the evidence, they can exchange their minds. And that's what happened to Thomas. Thomas was doubting lack of evidence. He's not, it's not unbelief, lack of evidence. But once the Lord appeared to him, show him the evidence and show him that I am the resurrected Christ. He said to him, you know what? My Lord and my God. He confirmed his faith in Christ. Christ become his my Lord. Christ has become a my God, my God. So, but the unbelievable person is someone who refuses to believe or consider after, uh, after affirmative evidence. Unbelief is someone who refuses to believe or consider affirmative evidence. Somebody given the evidence, but he denied Christ. That's unbelief. But sadly enough, so many people doubt in Christ. But it's okay to doubt. Seek, and it will be open to you. But I will not pray for those who are really unbelieving. They do not believe. Look at coronavirus right now and what's happening around us. You know what makes me sad? So many people, especially, forgive me to say that, many leaders in our country right now, they don't want to even acknowledge there's God. They are afraid to acknowledge there's God. And they cannot get the message. Look at two months ago, we were fighting something LGB or fighting a, a different fight right you now. Look at what we're fighting right now. Coronavirus. Wake up. God is here. God is sending a message to us. Let's wake up. Let's move. Let's acknowledge the existing for God. And I'm praying honestly that our school system will bring God to back to school. We we'll bring God to the courthouse. We we'll bring God to our everywhere in our society. Let's pray for that. So there's a difference between doubt and unbelief. Doubt again, lack of evidence. But if someone body is doubtful, once he show the evidence, they can it changes their mind. And that's what happened to Thomas. Once the Lord the God appeared to him and showed him his evidence, he become a believer and said, hey, my Lord and my God. I hope you are in doubt. Just to God want to seek God. So we talked about what difference does the resurrection make in my life. Number one, it's cheerful or basically take away, remove any fear from my life. Number two, give the us power. Number three, restore the doubtful. Restore the so doubt. Number four, actually, restore the teach. The, 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 number four, Restore and teach the hopeless. Restore and teach the hopeless. They have no hope in God. The only person can give you hope is Christ himself. Or in other words, I want to say, confirm the truth about the Bible and, the, and about the scripture. Or um, and I can say, teaching the ignorant. And this is a story, actually, you find that story in Luke chapter 24. Verse 15 and to verse 48, which is the story of the two disciples of Amos. That's two disciples of Amos. Amos is a town about seven miles away from Jerusalem. And so two disciples of Amos, they were following Christ. They were following him. They loved him. They fell in love with him. They followed him in everywhere. But sadly, after he died on the cross, they were going back home. Very, I'm sure they were crying and weeping. And they were probably sharing a great moment together. Wow, remember when he fed the 5,000? That was a big moment. You remember when he, they raised ladder? So that, that was an amazing moment. You remember when he went to Simon's house and he raised his mother law? That was an amazing moment. And they were talking about how great this man and how many miracles he did, how walked on the water. Wow, this is amazing. And most of them, they were going back home, tearful, crying. And finally, somebody was walking with them. The two disciples for months. And he started to look, what's happening? And they tell him, Are you ignorant? Uh, I, they ask him, Are you where are you from? You do not know what happened in Jerusalem? 
Did you know about Jesus and the son of others? The one who did, and they probably talked about all the miracles. He died. Our hope is dying. He's our hope. He's our power. He died. We have no hope. And Jesus said to them, you know what? Ignorant. And he started explaining to them everything from the scripture. And it showed us the power of the Bible. That's why I'm saying here, confirming the importance of the power of the Holy Bible. He said, look, don't you know? And he started going step by step. All the prophecies from the Old Testament, it showed him. And he told him he must rise from the dead. And while he was walking with them, he break bread. And they recognize that he's Christ. You know what happened to them? The two disciples from Christ. They were leaving Jerusalem, coming back home. They went back to Jerusalem to witness Christ. Exactly like Mary Magdalene. She was leaving her house in the morning to go to the empty tomb. She came back home to preach Christ and his resurrection. So the resurrection gave them power, gave them strength, gave them support, gave them support. And they said to them, you know what? I love the, in the chapter 24, verse one, and their eyes were opened and they recognized that he is Christ. So if you have any hope, no hope, if you're hopeless, if you lost your hope, I hope tonight Christ can open your eyes. I love this beautiful verse here in Luke chapter 24, verse 01 about the two disciples from us, and their eyes were opened. I hope our God can open our eyes to see what beyond the coronavirus. What beyond the coronavirus? What coronavirus message to us? What does this mean to me? May God bless you. May God give you power, strength, and support. everybody. Christ is risen. I hope now, when you think about really, when you when somebody tell you Christ is risen, he tell him who is risen, you can understand what difference the resurrection of our Lord God Savior Christ made in our life. What difference the resurrection of our Lord God Savior Christ make in my life? We talked about four points. Number one. Number one, take away, remove any fear from our heart. Number two, give us power, as exactly what happened to this. Number three, restore the doubtful. If you are in doubt right now about God, God is willing to restore your doubt. And we talked about the difference between doubtful, doubt, and unbelief. Number four, restore the hopeless. Restore the hopeless. May God help all of us really to see what beyond this. And glory be to God forever and ever. I mean, if it's just any state of it. Just I want to make some quick announcement. Uh, yesterday, actually, the church celebrated the 40 days memorial of our beloved uh, Uncle George Faragalla. Uncle George Faragalla has, uh, yeah, he has a beautiful family. Uh, his wife, uh, his daughter, uh, Kirir Toma and uh, her sisters, Sonia, Nora, and also uh, May God reverse his soul in heaven. Yesterday with the four days memorial. Also, yeah, today we celebrate also the four days memorial for Tant Margaret Saad, and the Nardal Rabin Dait, Arabin in Ahad Sama. Where tomorrow we'll have the funeral, actually. Tomorrow morning we'll have the funeral at 11 o'clock for Tant Nadia, one of my Aziz. Madame and Maru, the king, some of the kind of senior citizen building, and the whole game CBS, where I'm as if Fontanetia gone when must few years ago, young, can get my Aziz and I will be a get now, my dog shall let a hat of the Kalam Berak, you will let you want to be an abyssal Wahdi, and after the Genezel Wahdi, and the man Wahdi in Maya. But tomorrow, the Hibbe after the Genezel, it will text me, Miss Rahan Bess. لو حضرها لازم تكون في العربية بتاعتك ما تخرجش بره العربية هتكون الساعة 11 الصبح بإذن الله نطلب تعزية لعم عزيز ربنا يديله التعزية ويديله المعونة والقوة هو عم عزيز في طنطا نادية كانوا ناس بركة خالص خالص ودايما كانوا بيحضروا معانا في السينيور سيزون بروجرام وربنا يبارك وينيح نفسها ويدي العزاء لعم عزيز نصلي جميعا لكل الذين انتقلوا لاست ويك يعني لاست ويك وفري موشن نصلي بيهم وربنا معاكم ويبارك فيكم ونصلي للمرضى كلهم في بعض لسه حبايبنا لسه تعبانين 
Also, let's pray for those who work in the hospital. They are our hero. They really, yeah, and every day we pray for them. God give them power and strength and support. Rabbina ma'ak, we barak fikum. Tomorrow, you will be with Abu Nakrullus with the Arabic message tomorrow. I told you, Salah al-Arabi Bukhara, ma'abu Nakrullus bezi lassa sama. Ikhir sosanisti, ayri sosanisti, Rabbina ma'akum, we barak fikum. Ilahna kul al-mabdu al-karama, illa bedan. Ameen al-Nilu, ya zib sa'ad al-Trika, iyo ke. And you may have more, he can fight, as was the on the on and on. To know she will employ him with your open choice, this is bare Christ, or Jesus Christ our God, who is from the early, so he won when I am, Kriya lay son, Kriya lay son, Kiria flogi son, I mean, is more rose, more rose, he not any other one ever, on the S, who has received the naughty, I mean, as the show of him. Okay, the peace, grant us peace, establish for us the peace, for them that are the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, lead us with the favor of the Father, Lord, and Amen. Hallowed be the name, the kingdom come, the will be done. Achtin bess of kilma wahda bess of Sarah Hayani. Wahashtuna, 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 wahashtuna. The Shab wahashta gitten, the Kisa Taba number one wahashta gitten. وحشينا كل الشعب الشباب والاطفال افري اسر صدقوني يعني وحشينا كثير جدا 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 ولكن بنصلي ربنا ياثر هذه الايام ونرجع ثاني لبعض ونشوف بعض ونصلي في الكنيسه يعني ربنا معكم محبه الله الاب نعمه الابن الوحيد شركه تعطيه ربنا معكم